Greetings everybody, it's Jim and I finally got to it and got to Starship Troopers Scenario 4. I know you've been waiting for a long time to see it as much as I have been to play it. Now I'm going to need your help on this one. So get ready in the comments section below. Okay, because there's two things about this scenario that I notice is really weird. Now as you know, each uh, scenario adds upon the last with a new rule so you can learn incrementally. Right. Um, but I'm really losing the idea of what this new rule had to do with this scenario. The scenario is rather straightforward. It's a cavalry kind of uh, video. Basically, there's going to be two factions fighting and the Marines are coming in to save the day. Um, but the thing is, I just don't understand what the rule is, which is about engineers. Um, what has to do anything about it. So get ready on your keyboards because I need your help on this one today. I'm going to be talking over with you and going over the scenario report for Starship Troopers Scenario 4 Revolt. So in Scenario 4 Revolt, we see the skinnies saying, enough is enough with you bugs, you're out of here, okay? And basically what they're doing is, it's like I said, it's a cavalry scenario, and on turn 4 or later, the Marines actually come in to save the day, and they're definitely going to need their support. Let's take a look at, um, you know, a little first view here of things to come. This is on turn four, a little bit of a preview here. Um, but basically the skinnies and the bugs are up in the upper right hand corner taking care of business. And the Marines, when they come in, they don't come in necessarily on turn four, they roll the die. All right. And then on a one or a two, they come in. They could come in much later. Not only do they possibly come in much later, um, but when they, you know, when they do drop, they drop on the bottom left-hand corner of the map board. They're all spread out using the drop principle, um, and that's fine. But the thing is, it's going to be even more turns before they get to do any support for the skinnies. So the skinnies, for a good six turns at the very least, are going to be on their own. Um, now, there, the Marines and the Skinnies have a little surprise for them waiting, and that is that the Bugs also now have high demolition charges um, that can be set up. They got 25 of them in this scenario, and they can be set up anywhere one hex away from any of their tunnels. Um, and they explode with devastating effect with the strength of like 24, 26. I forget the exact number all of a sudden. But man, uh, it just does a number to any stack. Uh, so basically, uh, now the Marines don't necessarily have to, to uh, attack in stacks, so that's okay. But the Skinnies certainly do. And of course, you hit one stack uh, with them, and they're just going up in smoke. Uh, and there's a lot of potential points lost. And now that I think of it, this was the first thing that I was going to talk to you all about. And now I just realized what it was. Uh, the workers, I'm like, what am I using these guys for? Now, if you remember in the in the scenario, uh, number one, you get a number of workers. And yeah, they could be used as decoys, um, you know, because you don't know where they're at in the strongholds and such. And that's OK. Now, he's thinking here, what are they used for? Now, I just realized what they are for. They are meant to run out into the field and blow things up, you know? But now the thing is, these high demolition charges though, don't blow up automatically. They are set to blow up when the, the bugs say they do. So maybe the, skin, the, the workers aren't for that. I was thinking they would be used as cannon fodder, but maybe they're not because, okay, I could see that your workers are just standing there I'm not going to blow them up, you know, so it, because they're not hidden. So I guess that's not it either. You're going to have to tell me what these workers are for in this scenario because you get um, you get a good nine of them. Uh, what do you use them for? You don't get points uh, for the scenario form. Uh, the way you get points, the bugs, of course, if they kill anything, they get points. Um, one point for a worker, two points for any Marine, pretty much. Uh, and the same thing with the... Um, well, not the same thing, I'm sorry. For the Marines and the Skinnies, they get points only if they have warriors uh, or Marines in the city hexes themselves, all right? Now, this is where the workers for the bugs come in because they can just take up space with their workers. That one makes sense. But the workers for the humanoids, I just don't understand what the point is. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, uh, let's go on to talking about the engineers. Now, I want to take a moment to thank all of you right now because I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button and let me know I'm doing a good job. I do appreciate it.
All right, so in scenario four, you get three new rules to play with. One of them you already heard about, which is for the bugs, the high explosive demo rounds, you get 25 of them. Um, but for the Marines, you get two new units, you get engineers and you get air cars. Now the air cars move uh, with 20 uh, movement points. And of course the engineers are meant to be on them because they only have two movement points otherwise. And the purpose of the engineers is you get 18, in this scenario, 18 high explosive charges, and that's meant to blow up the tunnels of the bugs. Now, I can see this probably happening in other scenarios or scenarios that you would want to create. Um, but for this scenario, this is one of the things that was lost on me, folks, is what was it? What was the point on this scenario? Let's take a look again at that map here. Um, just trying to show you the pr proximity of my, my tunnels and the city, because the thing is, the, you know the Marines are coming at least uh, at the very least on turn four. So you, as the bugs, you want to get busy and take advantage while you can of against the um, against the skinnies. So, you know, I, I moved everybody out. So what's the point? What is the point of the, you know, because the idea is the, the quick movement that they can go from one spot to another, okay? And that's fine, but once you've committed all your forces, which I definitely did by turn two, what, what else is there left? Why would you sit there blowing up a tunnel? There's no experience points um, to get to the brains or anything like that, so it seemed to serve no purpose. Uh, so that was a weird thing uh, that I found that they chose to do in scenario four. So those are the two things I need your help on. So comment down below, what are the workers for in this scenario for the skinnies? And what is the effective uh, relevance of the engineers in this scenario? The only thing I could think of is they have so many other rules to talk about later um, that even though the engineers are probably more useful in later scenarios, they had to introduce them somewhere. And this was the point. So it's the only thing I could think of. Um, but anyway, let's go over the forces of what you get here. Uh, for the skinnies, you're going to get uh, six strongholds, 18 warriors, nine of the elusive what the hell are you guys doing here workers, and you've got five heavy weapons. Now, the thing is about the heavy weapons when you're playing the bug player is you're pretty much going to want to spread out because you really don't, unless the skinnies are holed up in a... Uh, a fortress or one of the strong points, uh, basically you can take them one-on-one -on -one pretty easy, so you don't need the stack. Um, so the idea for the uh, skinny players to pretty much hold on to those um, hold on to those uh, heavy weapons as long as you can, because once the Marines arrive, the bugs will start to have to stack. Uh, so as far as bugs, you get your typical uh, brain contingent, just everything for one group there. And for the Marines, um, you're getting one full squad. Uh, you get 21 uh, Marines, uh, three leaders, uh, three scouts. You got a uh, 12 of a mix of delayed, uh, delayed blast uh, markers, and you're going to get your six engineers, as you see there, and the six air cars. Um, so that's the forces that you're going to have for this scenario. So here we have my loose and fast setup for the skinnies. Now, my opinion is, of course, as most of you war gamers know, setup is half the battle in any game. Now, when I'm learning a scenario, though, for the first time, I'm just trying to learn it because there's no reason to think too much about it because tactics will come very apparent just after you play it for a little bit. So what did I learn here? Obviously, I didn't want to put my heavy weapons like I did the, those two at the top there uh, in front of the city hex because that blocks line of sight. Even a smidge of a city hex will totally block your line of fire, so they shouldn't have been there. I had uh, everybody else under the strong points. Um, that was kind of okay, I mean, but the truth is, you know, the idea of the scenario is to have everybody in the city itself to gain points. You don't gain points otherwise, so there's no real reason to be aggressive. Um, and the fact that the, the skinnies can move four hexes a turn uh, very fluently within city limits, and the bugs can only move one hex a turn anyway, and the stacking that they can do, uh, they can get about three uh, people a, a, a hex, units a hex, so they can just basically bounce around the bugs all day long while they're waiting for the Marines to come in. Uh, so, but they did play them pretty aggressively here. It worked out for them, though, but it's not something I would have done the second time around. So here we have turn, the end of turn two, kind of the beginning of turn three, actually, by the time I took the picture, because nothing really happened on turn one, um, mainly because, you know, the bugs just arrived. The, the skitties moved first, so they're just kind of waiting for the bugs. So they actually don't even get anything to do on their first turn. Now, I kept the warriors in the strongholds. 
um, forcing the bugs to stack to take care of them. And I moved these skinny workers, which I don't know what else they would do, uh, into the city themselves. They don't get any points for being there, and they can't really do anything uh, to block the bugs because the thing about this game is everybody can move over everybody else. It's very uh, movement-oriented, uh, no zones of control, so it's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, nothing really much happened, a little bit of disruption. Again, I knew better. Um, you have to attack like 2-1, to 3-1 to one to make any kind of result actually happen and have any kind of weight. You're really playing the luck of the dice if you don't. So here's what's transpired a few turns later, but just before the Marines arrive, uh, basically the bugs have taken shop up top of the map and the uh, skinnies have actually defended successfully on the bottom. Uh, basically what happened here was there was this one notorious uh, stack next to uh, bugs that were trying to get through a strong point on the bottom of warriors, kept on trying, disrupting them, disrupting them, and then finally uh, some heavy weapon uh, missiles had enough and they took care of practically the entire stack effectively. Uh, other than that, it's been heavy weapons against heavy weapons. Um, you know, all the forces for the uh, skinnies have basically evacuated the strong points and the heavy weapons moved into them for a defensive bonus being careful not to stack because it's okay for warriors to stack because they got to it anyway but not for the heavy weapons um you'd want them spread out pretty much uh you know you don't want them all in one eggs in one basket as it were uh now you also notice that there's a heavy result on the skinnies okay because they actually uh, are attacked on the alien results table, which really effectively means when they're getting attacked three to one, uh, it basically means they have a 16% more of a chance to survive than normal. Okay, uh, so that's pretty interesting there. Now, how do you justify it? Are they emboldened? Do they have extra allied technology? I'm not sure, but they actually survive a little bit more now. All right, so here's the end of turn five. Now, it says turn four. If you look at the upper right-hand corner there, I'm using Steve Jackson's red, beautiful resin dye there. The link is down below if you want to grab that. But it's the end of turn five because the Marines can't even uh, roll until after the end of turn four to see if they arrive. And I rolled a one or a two, and so they definitely did. It definitely could have been a different game if they arrived later. Mind you, the skinnies are holding their own quite well to the point that if you know the scenario, you almost could be tempted to keep the Marines back and not move forward at all because you know you got those landmines just all over the place and they are devastating and that's the only way the bugs win is if they kill your marine so it's like well don't kill them you don't lose any points <laughs> you know let the skinnies handle it on their own if they can uh, but i played it honest and i moved them in because that's the idea of the scenario after all it's their first um, you know, time that they ever encountered the minefields, I guess. That's the way I played it. So here we have the end of turn five. The Marines are coming up. They haven't hit any of the minefields yet. That's closer to the city. Uh, but, you know, as much as I said that this was going to be a mop-up operation for the Marines, I think that's going to be no matter what, right, uh, as, as we've been proved in the other three scenarios. Um, but the thing is, I've been playing very aggressively with the skinnies, right? And the thing is, you only get points if there are any left in the city at the end. So basically, not only do the bugs gain a point for killing a warrior, they actually gain two because it's one less point that I can't get, right? So I've been underestimating that to a good bit. So I'm thinking it's closer than I'm anticipating right now. And it really comes down to how many of these Marines actually get hit by the minefield on the way up. Now, part of me was like, well, that's kind of a cheesy factor. I mean, is this game going to be won or lost based on that luck factor of, you know, who gets hit or not? But the thing is, it just kind of reminds me of a basketball game, NBA basketball game, uh, as far as when the scenario actually starts. And I don't think it started yet. See, the thing is, in an NBA basketball game, the game doesn't really start, in my opinion, uh, until five minutes until the end. Right, five minutes to the end is when it's and when it starts. How many timeouts do you have? Uh, you're eight points behind. Somebody's behind by X amount of points, and uh, this person's got so many fouls on them before they're eliminated. This person's got so many fouls before they're eliminated. That's the scenario. That's when it happens. And I'm thinking this is the same thing here. This is all means to an end to get, you know, it seems like it's random and such, but then we'll get to the after the Marines get there is when the actual gameplay begins. To a point, you know, everything's been on, not on rails, I can't say that because there's a lot of random factors going on, but it just seems like this is when it begins. And I've noticed that with another game from Task Force Games, Warriors of Patak, 
that I'm going to be doing a video on because it kind of has the same factors. I'll get into that uh, next week on that one. But yeah, it's not done yet. The, the, the Marines are definitely going to wipe the board with them, but this game isn't about last man standing. So later, uh, as the Marines ar arrived, it seems like they weaved right through my minefield. Uh, you know, I didn't have them in any set pattern. There were gaps. Uh, they just seemed like they moved right through it. Now, the one thing that I did think about later was there are probably dead spots in, in the on the game board because you know the Marines are going to arrive down here, and you know how they move. They're going to jump. Uh, six to ten hexes then they're going to have that extended jump where you get to check again but you're going to jump over certain areas always the same time right so i'm wondering if i hit that sweet spot where they just kind of jumped right on over uh so that's something to think about now that probably um would come down to just experience of where the most optimal spot to put the minefield would be where would you put the minefield in this scenario leave a comment down below uh, but then again if you're playing your friend and they know that you know that you know that they know where you put the minefield then it turns into something different um, but generally you're, you're going to assume that they're going to move their max movement and then jump again their other half movement and they're not going to you know take one or two off they're going to go the full max um, but basically, the as you can see here, uh, the skinnies are just holding up. They're just staying put. They're staying in their strong points with the heavy weapons. Uh, anybody, even the uh, even the warriors, are not fighting now. They're just kind of moving on over. And with a movement of four um, in the city, they can pretty much have their bugs come to them. And even then, they can dodge them afterwards, probably. But as you can see, the bugs are moving very slowly in the city. One hex a turn. Uh, this really doesn't look good for the bugs at this point. So this gets a little deceptive here. It looks like it's definitely a Marine victory at this point. They've all made it into the city practically. Maybe the next turn they will be. Uh, and definitely that was the plan. But then again, you don't see any warriors for the skinnies, do you? Nope, they're pretty much all gone uh, at this point. And there was definitely some Marine casualties along the way. And that's two points for the for the bugs at that point. So it was a little bit closer at this point. I felt like I still had to, to uh, flush it out a few turns more, uh, but no lo and behold, like two turns later, uh, there was nothing left uh, for the bugs at that point. And, you know, I'm looking at the workers right now uh, for the bugs that is, and, you know, yeah, the idea that I was going with, I was trying to figure out a use for them. The idea being to take up space so you can't have space, right? That you would have to take care of them, but it didn't really matter. Uh, the, the work Workers are there for the skinnies along the side. Yeah, there was a few, uh, I, as you can see, they were actually guarding the uh, warriors in the back, which seems really uh, counterintuitive. Uh, but then again, the idea of the skinnies using uh, their forces as, uh, you know, just sacrificial lambs isn't really new. But it was in on turn 10 here that it was definitely a Marine victory, no doubt about it. So I had fun for fun's sake with this scenario, but it definitely wasn't my favorite scenario. I believe that so much relied on that minefield to be effective that it just turned into a luck game. I might as well, if I'm going to sit around for uh, two hours, an alternative would just stay here, pick a hand, you know, because at two points of Marine uh, for the bugs, if one goes up in smoke, um, you know, it has to be effective. Uh, and my guys just kind of weave through there. That's just the way it worked this time. And at three to one, four to one odds, uh, some of them still only got stunned. You know, now it could have gone the opposite way, you know, and it just seems like it's too much uh, for that. Didn't have any problems with the scenario itself. Um, you know, the, the um, you know, Calvary come in and save the day. Um, you know, it's interesting that they would say it come, they drop in on a one or a two on a turn. I know they want to randomize it, but at the same time, I'm thinking, boy, that could really go bad for the the skinnies as well. Now, again, maybe the whole point of these games in this scenario is just to play for playing sake, just having fun. Okay. But it may be so, and I've noticed that about the other ones that they were also a little bit just for, um, you know, randomness in there and stuff. Uh, I also thought that the engineers would actually have something to do with finding those mines. I would think that would be exactly what they do, but I looked at the rules for them. They breach tunnels and stuff like that, but they have, they don't have anything to actually find those mines. That that's what I thought they were going to do, and they didn't. So I'm kind of surprised. I would think they would have some kind of demolition charge that would wipe out a complete area, or you'd be able to at least detect the the the, the bombs, if not set them off, which means your guys could wave weave through. And the next video I'm doing, Warriors of Patak, is going to have some similarities to this scenario. Again, about when the scenario starts, uh, just like a basketball game, as I made that analogy. Uh, but I definitely had fun with that one. So I'll see you next time for that video.